What's up people? Today we're going to be containerizing a Golang application using a multi-stage container build, then automating the process of building and pushing it to Docker Hub using GitHub Actions. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do whenever you're containerizing any application is just in the root of your project, create a Docker file. Uh, that's Docker file, all one word with a capital D. That way, if you're using VS Code, it'll automatically recognize it and help you with the syntax. By the way, this is a series, and if you're interested in watching all the way from the beginning where we are building this uh, Golang REST API and going all the way through sending it to Kubernetes, I will put a link to the playlist in the description below. Today we're going to be building a multi-stage uh, Docker build and essentially what that means is that there are multiple steps in the Docker build where you can build individual artifacts in previous stages and then take those artifacts that you created in the previous stages and copy them into your final image. It's a really good way to keep your image size low and to keep the layers in your image low. Um, it, it's best practice to do this when building a Docker application if you can. The first stage uh, in this Docker build is going to be pulling in root certificates uh, from a, an Alpine image. Uh, you can really choose any Alpine image, but pulling in root certificates so that way, since this is a web application, it needs to have root certificates. And the second thing we're doing in this stage is creating a user called app and assigning it the user ID of 1001. Um, that is going to be used later on when we run this container as this user instead of the root user, which is good for security. The second stage is the actual builder of the application. So for this stage, we're going to use the Golang container from Docker Hub and we're gonna pull the version of Golang that we were using to build the application. So in my case, it's 1.17. And you name this stage builder. Uh, you can name it whatever you want, but it's good to name them so you can reference them later. This stage is going to actually build the binary of the application itself using, using the go command. So this is really kind of like the meat of, of what is actually doing the build. So again, we're starting from Golang 1.17. We set the work directory to a, a just any directory that you want to name. I, I like putting everything in one directory just for the sake of keeping everything organized. Um, I am going to copy the root certificates into this, although that's not necessarily a step that's required. In case you ever wanted to run this container from the Golang container, so for example, if you were doing development on it within the container, you can't do it from the final product. You'd have to do it from here. Um, that's a topic for another time, but but if you want it to work, you need to make sure that you have the root certificates in here. So I'm going to copy them in. And you can see here that I'm using dash dash from root certificates, which means copy this information from the previous step called root certificates. Then we're doing copy dot dot, which means take all of the information that is in this project. So all of, you know, in the on the left, the app vendor, go mod, go sum, all that stuff. It's getting copied into the container. Uh, so that way it can build the binary. The next step is the run step. And this is what actually will do the build and generate the uh, the application. Most of this command is pretty boilerplate. Uh, Cgo is disabled. I'm setting the operating system to Linux. I'm setting the architecture to AMD64. Um, and that's mainly because we're gonna be using this to run on Kubernetes and, and that's the architecture you wanna use. And the rest of it is just the build command that you would use for go. Uh, so in this case, it's go build dash mod vendor because we've vendored all of our dependencies. Uh, dash O is the name of the actual application after it creates it. So we're gonna call this YouTube stats. That's the name of the binary. Then the command that we would use to actually build the application. So we're, we're telling it go build dot slash app slash dot slash dot dot dot, which we talked about in the previous video. Uh, we'll tell it to go into the app directory and essentially compile everything that's in the app directory in order to, in order to start this build. Okay, now time for the last stage. Um, this stage is a little special and you can't really get away with this uh, with all types of applications, but with Go applications, if you're building a standalone binary that doesn't need anything else, you can build your container from scratch, which means don't base it on another container. We're, we're, we're building a container completely from scratch. 
I'm going to name this one final. Again, you don't really have to name it because we're not going to build anything off of it, but I just like to be consistent. Then we're going to copy a few things in from the previous stages. First two things we're copying in are the Etsy password and Etsy, and Etsy group, which uh, will make it so the user that we created in the first stage, the user called app, is uh, copied into this application. Then just like in the previous stage, we are gonna copy in the root certificates, uh, but this time we're gonna pass the flag to set the owner of those root certificates to the user 1001 and the group 1001. And I should mention that I did make a mistake here that I'll catch later, um, so I'll talk about it then, but um, uh, the copy command to copy the root certificates is wrong here, I'm missing a slash. And then the final piece that we're gonna copy in is the actual binary that was built in the builder stage so again, we're going to set the owner of that file to 1001 in the group 1001 and copy from builder and then the path of the builder from the previous stage. And then we're going to copy it to just slash YouTube stats. So the binary is going to be right in the root of this final container. I made a mistake here too, and I'll fix that in a second with the from. I didn't put an equal sign on there. Then the last couple steps, we're going to set the user of this container to app and then we are going to set the entry point to YouTube stats, meaning that as soon as you run this container, it is going to immediately run the YouTube stats uh, binary that we built in the previous step. That's really it for actually putting together the Docker file. Now we can go ahead and try to run it. All right, so this is a new computer and I don't even have Docker installed. So uh, as an added bonus, we're gonna go through how to install Docker, Docker desktop on a uh, Mac. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just uh, go to the Docker website, uh, download the application and install it just like normal. There's no command line stuff. You just just install it like as a regular uh, UI based app. If you've made it this far, you're probably getting something out of this video. So please consider subscribing. I'll be doing a follow up to this one talking about some alternatives to Docker Desktop and Docker Hub as well as why you would want to containerize an application. And if you're subscribed, you'll get notified. And I know that 95% of you are not subscribed. So hook me up. It doesn't cost you a dime and it helps me tremendously. Okay, I'll leave you alone now. Docker recently changed their licensing for Docker Desktop. So it is one thing to keep in mind. Um, if you're working on personal projects, it's not a problem. You're welcome to use it for free. Um, but you'll see in the big letters here on the screen that you can't actually uh, use it for work stuff. If you work for a large company, your company has to pay for a license for you to use Docker Desktop. So just keep that in mind. Uh, there, are also, there are some alternatives. All right, now that we have Docker installed appropriately, we can go ahead and build this, uh, this container image. So the command for this is docker build dash T, and then I, that's the tag testing that I put in there. Um, that's just because we're building it locally. It doesn't have a name. Um, and then just a dot, which says build it from the Docker file that you find right here in the root of this project. Um, gonna run into a few problems here, as you'll see, which is totally normal. And I don't like to skip over this stuff. So first off, uh, Alpine version was wrong. There is no 3.16. So I had to go to 3.15 and then run it again. All right. The next error that I ran into was that issue about the certs that I, that I talked about before. It's going to take me a second to figure this out as I bang my head on the desk, but, uh, both on lines eight and line 15, uh, I needed to have a slash after slash ETC slash SSL slash certs. Um, I also didn't actually type out CA-certificates in uh, line 15. So I'll go ahead and fix those now. All right, now that it's built, we can go ahead and run it. Um, the command for this is going to be docker run and then dash IT to get it to hold open the terminal and then dash P, which is the port number and then the name of the uh, tag that, you, that we wanna run. I, Cause since I called it testing, we can just run it as testing here. And you'll notice that I get an error. It says the YouTube API key is not provided. And if you watch the previous uh, video in this series, you'll know that we're building a REST API that returns YouTube data and it requires a YouTube API key. That key is set in my local um, environment variables, but it's not in the container, which is normal. So in order to get them into the container, you have to be able to, you have to pass them in. The way that I'm going to do it here is by using a .env file and then in the run command, telling it to use that .env file. Um, later on in this series, we're going to put this, we're going to package this all up into a Helm chart and push it to Kubernetes, which has a totally different way of managing environment variables. So this is kind of a workaround just to get it to work here, but essentially create a .env file, 
and then put the environment variable values that you need into it. In our case, it's going to be the YouTube API key and the YouTube channel ID. And a, uh, a .env file needs to have no spaces, no commas, and no semicolons. And I'm going to fail at that a whole bunch of times here. But one of the issues that I ran into is VS Code trying to be too helpful. Even after I got this right and hit save, it would it would try to put spaces between the uh, the equal signs and the variable and the value, which you don't want. So, just a quick tip on that: if you if you want to make it so you can save things uh, without it auto formatting, you can hit Command Shift P on your keyboard to open up the command palette in VS Code, and there is a command in there for save without formatting, which you'll see me do here. And you'll notice in the command in the run command here, uh, the flag dash dash env dash file equals dot env is the additional piece you need to add to get it to grab these environment variables from the file. At this point it ran, but the uh, environment variable files were still wrong because I had quotes and semicolons, but we're going to go ahead and run it uh, just by going to uh, going to localhost and YouTube channel stats, and you'll notice that I got a connection refused. And the reason the connection was refused here was because I had the port numbers wrong. So dash p uh, asks you to put the host port number first and the container port number second. So this container runs on 10101 in the container, but I wanted to run it on port 80 on my browser. So what that command should be is run dash it dash p 80 colon 10101 and then the end file and then the word testing. All right, fix the port number, run it again. All right, so that time I got a 400 and that's actually great. That's one of those situations where you got an error but you're happy you got the error because it wasn't connection refused. 400 tells me that the server did respond. It just didn't respond correctly. And then back to the application, this is where I realized that it was not copying in the root certs correctly, which I talked about earlier. So I had to go back to the Docker file and correct that. All right, just add those slashes in and then we'll try it again. Got to build one more time since I updated the Docker file. All right, run it again. Still got a 400. Keep troubleshooting. This time, though, you can see that it says that the API key is invalid, which gave me a huge hint that my M file wasn't working correctly. So now I will adjust the M file and fight with the auto formatter and get this all working correctly. All right, let's run it one more time. Hey, hey, that time it works. All right, cool, success. We've built a Docker application, we've built it locally, and now it runs. Now the next step is to automate this process when we push this up to GitHub so it will automatically build the container and push it to Docker Hub. The first step in pushing anything to Docker Hub is to create a repository for your project. I like to name my repositories the same as the GitHub repo just for the sake of not getting things lost. I'm creating this as a public repository. When you create public, you can have as many public repositories as you want on Docker Hub with a free account. You can only have so many private ones and then they start charging you money. And in the description, I will put the link to the GitHub repo for this just so anybody that finds it can go check it out. All right, so now we have a Docker Hub repository for this project and it is completely empty. The next step for being able to push this to Docker Hub using GitHub Actions is we need a security key, or in this case with Docker Hub, it's called an access token. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate an access token for the purpose of using with GitHub Actions, and I'm gonna call it GitHub Actions, and we're gonna give it permission to read, write, and delete, and go ahead and hit generate, and it will generate the key. Just go ahead and copy the key and store it somewhere safe for now, and keep this secret, because it gives everyone access to everything. All right, now I'm gonna create the file structure for the GitHub action. Uh, by default, these should be put into a folder called .github, and then slash workflows, and I'm calling my file release.yaml. And this is where the instructions will go for automating this. I'm pulling the template for this GitHub actions uh, directly from the uh, GitHub marketplace. So if you go to the GitHub marketplace, click on actions, and then just search for Docker, it'll come up with a bunch of stuff, but the one made by Docker called build and push Docker images is the one you're looking for. And it has a full example. So you can literally just copy and paste uh, the first uh, YAML example that you see. And then we're gonna modify this a little bit for our use cases. The way this is set up right now is it says whenever something is pushed to the main branch, it is going to build. I wanna change that to say, whenever a tag is pushed, we're going to build, which I would think is a much better pattern for building applications. Essentially, when you tag it, you get a Docker image with that same tag. 
which is uh, ideal for, for Docker containers. The second part you'll see here is that it requires a username and a password, and this is where the Docker Hub username and the Docker Hub token come in. So in order to populate those without putting them directly into your source code, which would be a bad idea, is you wanna go to GitHub and go to the project that you're working on, and then go to settings, and then go to secrets and go to actions. The button at the top right says new repository secret. Just go ahead and click on that. And we're gonna name these secrets the same as what the uh, GitHub action calls for. So Docker Hub username and Docker Hub token. Docker Hub username is my Docker Hub username. Technically not a secret, but that's the way it's set up. And Docker Hub token will be the Docker Hub token that I just generated. All right, so I started putting in the uh, the name of the app into that tags uh, spot there and, and realized that I actually wanna have more advanced tagging than that. So I'll get into that here in just a second. So technically this would work and it would just push it up as latest every single time. But I think that we wanna have the tags translate through. So when you tag the project, the tags come through. So if you are on the uh, example Docker Hub uh, uh, action page that I was on just a second ago, there is a link that describes how to do tags and labels. And the most important steps are the first two steps here. The rest of them are the ones we've already done. So if you copy the first two steps here, which has to do with, with the first one is checkout, which checks out your code using, using Git. And the second one gathers metadata. So we're just going to go ahead and copy that. And then we're going to paste it in as the first two steps of our action. And of course, fix the... Uh, the YAML disaster that happened here with my with the copy and paste. And then in the tag section, I'm gonna delete some of the stuff that we're not using. So uh, first of all, take your hard-coded uh, tag name out of here and put it up into the images section. So this is the image, the root name of the image that it's, uh, that it's gonna be building, right? So that's just the name of my project on Docker Hub. And then here in tags, we're gonna remove the schedule and the refs and the SHA type, because all I really care about this generating for tags is three version numbers. One is the full ver version number that I tagged it with, the other one is the major and the minor version, and the other one is the major version. So for example, if I created a version 1.0.2, that would get pushed to Docker Hub as version one, version 1.0, and version 1.0.2. That way the next time when I make 1.0.3, that would come out as 1.0, one and 1.0.3. See what I'm saying? It keeps everything up to date. So that way, if you want to pull version one, you're always going to get the most recent version one. That's really the only way to do it with Docker Hub. It doesn't really have uh, advanced uh, version control and querying like you would see in something like NPM. And then down here in the bottom, we're going to tell it to use those tags that were created in the step above and also set the context since we uh, checked out the information in step one. All right, this looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit and push this. But first off, uh, you'll notice that I created the .n file and it actually has my secrets in it. So I'm gonna add that to git ignore. So first off, we need to create a .git ignore file and then tell it to always ignore the .env file so that way it doesn't ever get pushed to my repo. All right, so now we can go ahead and add the files commit them and push them to this branch. I'll put a link to this branch so you can see the finalized version of this on GitHub, and that'll be in the description below. And just for the sake of completeness, I did push the branch up and open a pull request, so that way I could look at my own pull request and review it and merge it. So the first test of this was I merged this and the action did not kick off, which is the way it was set up to be. This should only work when I tag this. So now let's go ahead and cut a tag and push the tag up to the origin. One of the things I will never commit to memory is how to tag something and how to push a tag I don't know why so I always look through my back scroll in order to figure it out I'm gonna tag this as version 0.0.1 and then push that tag all right now we should be able to go back to github and watch the action run so if we go to the actions tab on the project we can see here that the action is running and we'll just go ahead and fast forward through all this running all right awesome it finished on the first try too that's amazing now if we go back to docker hub and refresh the page we should see that the image has been pushed up and it sure has you can see here that it is now latest and it's latest version 0, version 0 0.0 and version 0.0.1. .0 They're all the same. I'll just go ahead and copy the name of the project from Docker Hub. And now instead of running it locally, we're going to go ahead and run this from the Docker Hub version. So just switch out the name there at the end that used to be testing with the real version. And you'll see that it pulls it down. It's pulling down the latest and it's running. And there we go. Now we have a fully containerized application that was written in Go and is pushed up to Docker Hub.